Coming up on American Builder, I have a simple job. I infill a door, nothing to it. And then one of my favorite things ever, I'm in an old, crappy, burnt out building. All next door caused this. Hmm. <laughs> Seems like there was a little bit of a problem with the neighbors. Plus a lot more. American Builder starts right now. I get called back to do a small job on a small job we already did, which is sort of a pain in the butt. They want to take this old rotted door out and fill it in. No big deal, right? Two by fours, insulation, drywall on the inside, plywood on the outside to match this. Not that big of a deal. The big deal is they forgot to leave the door open. So I just started prying off the molding here. I have to break in just to get the job started. Contracting 101, always a headache. Small finished nails. That's, that's the, the beginning of it. So cool, I can't see the lock. I was thinking I would see the lock almost through this already. Oh, this isn't gonna be easy. This is not gonna be easy. Right. Besides making noise, I don't really have a game plan. What to do, what to do, what to do. If you live in a good neighborhood by now, somebody would call the police. Although I hear dogs barking or geese. Okay, so. We're in. Okay, so taking the lock off, that little teeny screw is what saves you from being broken into. Take the door off. Number one, heavy door, done. Well, the lock gave me a hard time. I don't think the frame will. More tools, hold on. Getting the door frame out. Shouldn't be as challenging as I'm making it. Gotcha. I love the sound of snapping wood in the morning. Yeah. This is not a how-to video. It's just us muscling through the day. Door frame's out. Time to come out too. Look how rotted the bottom was. Wasn't even there. Don't ruin the plants. Cool. Okay. Oh, the flange is nailed in behind the plywood. That's how you're gonna mess with my life. Okay, we're done. Good luck. You need a new door now. Just thinking out loud here. I think I have an idea. Okay, so the frame, the flange goes behind the plywood. I don't wanna cut into the house and go through all that. I'm gonna take a skill saw with a steel blade. I'm gonna cut the frame off, just bend around the remaining amount, and then frame it back in quick. Otherwise, I'm cutting back here, I'm framing more than I wanted to, it's just not gonna work for me. So, I need more tools. I have everything I need, and I didn't have the sawzall. I had to run up the street, get another sawzall, safety glasses on, I'm gonna cut the trim off right here, put the two by fours on, and off I go. I'm, I'm ready to roll again, maybe. Oops, that hurts. Not all of my ideas are good, 
Oh, but this one's good. 10 bucks, I cut my hand open. You want some more? All right, so one blade down. This is coming out just like I planned. Not at all. Not one bit. I got here, the door was locked. I got in. I got the frame off. That was easy. No. Let's see this on Bon Villa. All right, so I got a stud on each side. It's less than 32 inches, so a stud on each side, a stud in the center. It's sort of overkill, but you know me, I'm a perfectionist. So I use my two and a half inch screws, drive them all the way home. I could have pulled out, I could have pulled out the compressor, but it's too small of a job. There you go, 16 inches on center, sent to post, frame back in, Heather's done, sill plate glued and nailed, three studs are in place, got the first half inch of sheathing to go on, then some tie back, then the finished plywood. So there's not much to the outside. The main thing is getting the door out, getting it framed back up. Two layers of plywood, insulation, drywall on the inside, your door is gone. It's a lot of work filling in a door. Done. All right, we got our first sheet on, and that's when our tie back comes into play. I'm just gonna cut a couple pieces big and then trim it afterwards. I never know how much I'm supposed to overlap the tie back, so I go like eight inches or better, so I know that I'm never gonna have a problem with water. There, how secure. Got the finish layer here. Myself a little guideline here. So almost like compounding. Even though I'm gonna put the trim around this, I'm just gonna fill in all the gaps. All right, that's it. So small jobs are always big jobs. It takes days to complete, right? I still have to do the insulation on the inside. I have to do the drywall mudding tape. I gotta prime this, I gotta do the slats. We are 75% done and I'm exhausted. Nothing to it. Door out, filled it in, drywall, insulation, put the outside plywood on, put the batten strips on, a little bit of paint, voila, no door. You can use whatever you want for trim on a home, right? I use Coma everywhere because it really is a superior product. You can hit it with a hammer, you can sand it, you can paint it, you can do anything to it that you can't do with the other guys. So it's, it's simple. It might be a tad more money, but it's your house. Don't cheap out on it. Hey, I'm Brian Gary, the American Builder. So, it's all about coma. I do the coma test to everybody. You cannot damage this product whatsoever. We have a beautiful home that we're putting on miles of coma, right? I get, I see it in my sleep. The two-sided, the durability, you, you name it, the guarantee, the warranty, it's paintable. I can go on longer than my buddy Duff, but I do have Duff on this house, and you know how much he loves it too. So Duff, you brought your uh, your billboard with you as usual. Yeah. Your product's already here, you know. Coma's got dropping off like pallets full. I love how it's wrapped on site. Not that it matters because you can beat the crap out of it and it still stays just as good. So I take Coma products all the time on site to show the guys how good it is. And obviously this house is proving it. But here's a here's a competitor's piece, right? This is what you're putting on your house or your hotel or your restaurant. That's how it looks, right? Guys put it on there, 
It's up around the window. You can see it from a mile away. Then I take my piece of coma with this Aluka technology. And I just want to show you that no matter what side we use, it doesn't matter. Get a little dirt on it. Smooth as can be. Also with coma, if you did get a ding, which you won't, it's one of the only products out there you can sand and actually make it completely ridiculously smooth. I didn't even have to where I beat it right here. I'm only sanding the dirt off. So, what's the story? You're gonna spend twice the money doing it five different ways on your home or you're gonna go and you're gonna figure out where to get coma and that's what you're gonna put in your house. So, do you want this? Or this? I gotta find Duff. I love playing with this stuff. Hey, I'm with Duff, and it's all about our friends here at Coma. I don't know where your jacket is. So, Saluka technology, I hear you say it in my sleep. I know what it is, right? I dent it. I do the, your demo all the time to people. We have a beautiful home that you would put nothing but, and Duff, there's a mile of Coma on here already. Yep, and your second mile just showed up on the truck. <laughs> this, is, this is a Coma house, as far as I can see. Sandable, paintable, non-dentable. Are these words I'm using, dentable? Okay, one more thing, because I know you're tired of hearing about Coma, right? Paint? Yeah, a lot of people are painting PVC. We've always said from the beginning that it should be painted. Right. But because it comes out white, a lot of people don't, but they eventually paint it. The so before and after. This is a typical PVC that's been painted. Right. It just falls off, seriously. It just falls off. Right. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's, that's crazy. Does this say you can paint it? They recommend that you paint it. Even, even, even the competitor says you should paint this. Yeah. So that will be your house if you don't buy Coma, okay? Hold together, let's go. We go. Are you kidding me? No. Nope. There you go, Coma, paint, duff. If this and this is on your house, it's not happening. No. Seriously, it's really not. All right, so. There's plenty going on. Let's go frame a few windows or whatever because I want to be involved in the next million lineal feet that we're putting onto this Beautiful. house. Beautiful. Thanks, Let's Tom. do it. You see the two guys, it's pre-cut, they did it on the ground, they put it around the window. It's like a piece of artwork in a way, right? Coma Trim Products is like artwork. You heard it here first, Brian Gary. I like that. You can hit it with your hammer because it's Coma. That's right. Yeah, you can, you can smash it with your hammer. You got it, that's a wrap. Coma, the only product you're gonna use when you're trimming out your house. That's a wrap. Construction, demo, burnt out buildings, I love it all. I think the smell of a burnt out building is, is really etched in my mind. True story, when I was a kid, I burnt my parents' house to the ground in Burlington, Mass. Don't judge me. I'm heading to a demolition job and we're gonna tear it down in a couple of days, but for right now, I'm gonna use my skills, I call them, and find something. It was a fire. Um, I love fire jobs because typically no one's been back in it since the fire. And uh, this is all boarded up and no broken windows, no kicked in doors. So this is like a dream come true for me. Paradise. Let's hit it. Let's, let's find some stuff. Cologne, still good. This was the freezer. The fire was so hot, everything melted. Maybe they're worth a fortune. Maybe they're worth 10 cents, I don't know. This is what I'm looking for. A pair of earrings. There is some signs of jewelry. What do you keep next to your bed? Besides those. What do you keep next to your bed? <laughs> you put your jewelry away before you go to bed. Maybe some money, maybe not. Oh. A quarter. So far, the find's been great. The adult room and the bathroom, it's the only place you'll find money. Or jewelry. Hello there. My Corvette. Next apartment. One thing is, there's so many units, there is a lot of scrap, like every refrigerator, every stove, 
That would have been a nice old clock, except that it got fried. Cheers. Still nothing. No fivesomes allowed. <laughs> All righty. The adult room I'm always looking for. Bunch of junk, pictures, cards. Hey, pull a nine out of there. Oh yeah, 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 yep. Remote, car keys, I'm on. Yeah! <laughs> Remote, you find car keys, you've hit the spot. I don't know if this is, it looks pretty nice. I know what this is. This, oh, I thought there was a ton of money here. Who has a hundred dollar bill and a five dollar bill? Oh, that's real. That's a real necklace. I have made my day. So, I'm gonna keep searching. But now I got it going on because I found, <laughs> I found money. I found a necklace. I found keys that go to nothing. But now, it's on. I'm like, I'm like ramped up now because once I find some money, hmm, I don't like needles. Diapers I don't like either. Diapers and needles. They go together like peanut butter and jelly. And this is where the fire started. This one socket. Just kidding, I have no idea. In my mind, I'm the fire inspector. These are artificial Christmas trees, yeah. Yeah, Merry Christmas. I don't think we can use that one next year. Usually it takes one kick, I must be getting old. Not that old, the other side came off. I win. <laughs> Nothing better than mold and fire mixed into one. <laughs> I'm allergic to not finding money. I just love the noise of demo, you know? It's like that noise. 15 minute parking. No parking. Well, I searched every single apartment I could. Fires are awful. I picked up some cash. Just going through some stock certificates. I hope there was a gone. I got some cheap jewelry. I got some expensive jewelry. I got enough for dinner. Hey, an extra grand on a job this size? I'll take it all day long. Oh, and I have a new costume for Halloween. Coming up on American Builder. Hmm. <gasps> new sock. Not new anymore. It's always good to break them in. Brand new segment called I'm Addicted. Brian Gary is addicted. I will put a deck on anything. Small decks, big decks, pool decks, ocean decks. It doesn't matter. Roof deck, you name it, I do it, right? You can use real wood, you can use all the composite decking out there, you name it, I love it. I just love decks, I'm addicted. I'll show you my first one. All right, so I am addicted, right? We came and there's a problem. First things I need to do is pick the deck. We picked Kevin. Awesome. Love it. Looks great. First truck unloaded, second one's on its way, but second problem. Well, we've got dirt everywhere. We can't just put a deck on dirt. Deck to dirt doesn't go. Mm -hmm. We gotta build forms, a sub floor, believe it or not. Put the deck on top of that. Uh-huh. Yeah. So dirt, sub floor, deck. A sandwich. We're building a sandwich together. Act one. We're decking. Build the sandwiches. <laughs> Let's go. All right, we've got enough. Can we start putting them down? Yeah, we're gonna need more, but we have so many built now. Let's at least get them out of the way and lay them out. Oh, let's remove the fake grass. Oh, the best part. If you don't mind. This is quality stuff. Let's get rid of it. So maybe we roll it up. Maybe we, maybe she just pulls it out of the way. Now the fun begins. So the new segment's called Addicted on American Builder. First thing I did was call my friends at Kebony. So, real wood, low maintenance, guaranteed a long life. This is something you need for your deck. It's a little hot out, we get a lot of square footage. Let's just get started. I 
got Glenn from Hidfast. Hidfast is a, I don't want to say it's just another way to put down decking, it's the only way to put down decking. Glenn invented this tool. Go figure that you came up with it, because why? You were in the trade for 25 years, and exactly. you got sick of doing it the wrong way. Tell me real quick about it before we uh, start banging it down, but that's what it does. It's the, the least visible hidden deck fastener on the market. First thing we looked at, how could we fasten both edges of a board and not have anything in the surface? Right. So we designed the fastener to go in uh, and include that spacer bar to gap the boards. Then we had to design a tool to drive the fastener. So, so the, we, the we, egg came first. <laughs> the egg came first. Gotcha. <laughs> it's amazing, but that's the really... The egg always comes first. <laughs> All right, when we get back to work, if you want to see this tool in action, go to hitfast.com and you'll see this going down. So to load the tool, you push back on this uh, feeder here that feeds the fasteners forward. You drop the fasteners in through the hole in the top, slide them over. You can put two strips in, push the pin down. The positioning pin will slide up against the joist, bring the tool up against the edge of the board, step on the foot plate. I can't fire the fastener until I pull the trigger. And then it's just a soft to medium strike on the cap. Day one, we're, it's hot. We did get a lot of square footage done because of your gun. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Day two, we put the rest of it down, but it stayed just as hot as day one. It was miserable going down. But let me tell you something. This is, this is real wood, right? Low maintenance, guaranteed a long life. Oh, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's not a composite decking. This is real wood, and it's a lot cooler than the composite decks. Go Kebony, I'm sold. I'm Brian Carey. Welcome to Addicted. 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 I'm addicted. Get it? I'm addicted. Whatever. Why are we here? He came here to show me his tool. That doesn't sound good. 